Hello, this is Jefferson coming at you from Tubelandia. Uh, please like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Today I'm going to be talking about the Genesis, The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway. Um, we're going to be comparing this original Porky US pressing to the brand new heavy groovy analog productions 45 RPM times 4 LPs in this groovy M packaging and beautiful slip cover. We're going to compare the sound quality, the overall appearance, and uh, anything else that pops to my mind. So please like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the other side. Okay, before we get into the shit out itself, a little background on this album. Uh, it was released in 1974, and it was the last album featuring Peter Gabriel on lead vocals before he left the band. Um, it's also probably my favorite album of that period, and, and of the Genesis incarnations, I love the Peter Gabriel versions the most. Uh, anyway, so it's 1974. Um, they were growing very theatric and they felt they had time to um, try a double album. And, you know, at this point, Peter Gabriel had just had a birth of his child and he wasn't spending a lot of time with the band because of various issues. He was back and forth. And so the other members of the band had to work kind of without Peter Gabriel a lot of the times. So um, as a result of this, the other band members became more independent, more strong on their own. And Peter Gabriel was kind of off doing his own thing, getting, you know, more theatrical and going in sort of a direction of his own. So this last album is sort of that last of that Peter Gabriel area Genesis. But then you could see the seeds forming for what Genesis would become during that transitional period after he left, as well as um, what Peter Gabriel would be doing after he left. So the con so this was their, first, their concept album, and um, it's a very dense uh, detail-packed story. I would advise you to go to Wikipedia to get the full gist of it as opposed to going through my interpretation of it, but it's really good. Musically, it's very challenging, and um, it, there's there's just layers and layers of instrumentation uh, from, you know, warbly vocals to kazoo and everything in between. Um, it's the classic definition of a prog rock album because there's a lot of stuff going on by very talented musicians and it just lends itself to being listened to over and over again because uh, you discover more on every listening. And despite it having somewhat of a dark-ish theme, um, there are a lot of songs in here that are somewhat uplifting, like uh, Sunshine in My Stomach, which sounds ridiculous, but it's also kind of a great... Um, great song and uh, there's other little moments that surprise you with their hope and joy in the midst of some uh, dark imagery and uh, situations so it's a great album it's not bloated as a lot of double albums can be and it's just really 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 great swan song to that version of Genesis before they both branched out and did um, a lot of different directions on their own both equally great um, but both very different. Okay, first of all, I have the original U.S. Lamb Nally's Down on Broadway, the Porky Cut, George Peckman, Pecco, Pecco Duck, Delta Pork, and a variety of other uh, nicknames. You can look it up on Discogs. Um, double album. And it is a classic prog rock uh, album in that it tells a story. So another thing about the um, Atlantic 75 series, this was uh, cut from tape by Chris Billman of Bernie Grumman Mastering. So there wasn't a classic records four times 45 or eight times 45 um, metal work for this album. It never existed, at least not according to Discogs. So uh, with the exception of, uh, yeah, yeah. So um, with this pressing, Every, all eight sides were cut fresh from tape 
And um, so this is a fresh interpretation of the tapes that were used. Uh, unlike Selling England by the Pound, where they used uh, three sides from the original classic re records metal work, and Chris Bellman then cut the second side. Um, so anyway, fresh cut from tape by Chris Bellman, Bernie Grumman mastering. And since Bernie Grumman did the original for uh, classic records at least, uh, I'm sure he had Bernie's notes and probably improved upon them where he could. Okay, a little uh, housekeeping. So I did the Genesis Selling England by the Pound. I, had, I compared that to the classic records, uh, a later a, an early Japanese pressing and the new Atlantic 75 series on uh, double 45. Um, in this shootout, I only have the US Porky original and the new Atlantic 75, and I did not have the classic records. I kind of looked for it, but I couldn't really find one for a decent price uh, before I did the shootout, shootout. So if anyone has a copy they want to let me uh, borrow, I would uh, take very good care of it and return it and pay for it if I damage it, of course. But since I didn't have it, my um, review is gonna be based on just the two versions that I do have. And um, in my experience, uh, the Porky cuts um, are very, very good for um, the albums I've heard them on, uh, Led Zeppelin, uh, Genesis itself, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Porky is one of the biggest names and mastering engineers out there, and I really love his stuff. Um, okay, I'm gonna start with the Porky cut itself. Um, so this is it. Um, you know, I listened to these, well, let me back up. I listened to both of these albums quite a bit. Um, I listened to the Porky first, cause that's one I've had for years, cause I knew the Atlantic 75 was coming. And you know, I thought, wow, Porky's a pretty good cut. Uh, not too bad. Then I got the Atlantic 75 and um, um, I showed it off on George Borman's 24 hour stream and um, was gonna do a review then. Um, and of course my record cleaner machine broke just after I popped the seal on it. So I had to use my backup record cleaning machine, but but it delayed me. So basically at the end of George's stream, I wanted to give a report. So I'd listened to a couple of sides of it and well, I listened to the whole thing through, but really focused on the first two LPs. And you know, it wasn't even close. I mean. There's more dynamic range, there's more, uh, there's a wider soundstage, uh, and there's a deeper soundstage on the Atlantic 75. There's also very, very intricate um, details that are there. Uh, it's less veiled than the Porky Cut. Um, everything um, that you want in the Atlantic, in, in this album, was available in this um, Atlantic 75. And I gotta, I gotta say, I love this in packaging that Stoughton did. Look how thick that spine is. You can see that. But everything fits really well. So you've got four panels, I guess. And look at that uh, artwork on the label. It's really great. On side two, second panel. third panel, and then the back jacket. So I listened to this and then I reported on board and stream that um, it was the the best, you know, it was the best I heard. It definitely was better than the Porky in most demonstrable ways. But, you know, after the stream, I went back and I put the Porky on and I listened to it and it's like, yes, it's more veiled. And yes, it's more definitely more compressed and definitely less dynamics. But the one thing it did have that was interesting that I noticed was that the vocals on the Porky Cut were much more prominent than on the Atlantic 75. Now, not to say that these vocals were suppressed or buried in the mix or anything like that. It's just for whatever reason with the mastering the vocals were more prominent on the Porky. Now the Atlantic 75, the vocals were just fine and they weren't suppressed or anything like that. They just weren't as prominent as the Porky. And I, I went back and forth on this for um, 
a long time to say, is this a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Um, is it, is it just, this is the way it ended up. And so what I did, I listened to the whole Porky and I listened to the whole Atlantic 75. Then I listened to side one of Porky, then side two, or sorry, rec the first two records of the Atlantic 75. And then back and forth, back and forth by side. And, you know, basically here are some, um, conclusions I came up with, uh, in no uncertain order. But, um, you know, on the 45, there's huge dynamics. Everything is perfectly clear. Uh, the fly on the windshield, when that big bass part comes in, it shook the room, right? Not like an obnoxious, you know, like that. It was clear. The bass was tight, distinct, but the room was basically rattling. Um, so there's a deep sound stage that went way beyond, um, right, almost up to the listing position, and then way, way back behind where the speakers were, as well as a super wide sound stage. Um, on Sunshine in My Stomach, there were just lots of things swirling in and out, and just with this increased fidelity and the opening up of the, by having it on 45, it was just really, really nice. Keyboard feel fills the, the, drum the drums are distinct everything's separated in the mix but everything's cohesive which you've heard me maybe complain before that sometimes you get so much separation that it's not cohesive and it sounds sounds weird not the case here this atlantic 75 is just amazing um you know on the grand parade of lifeless packaging the voices just grab you they're deep and low and clear um for the waiting room um the dynamics just jump, jump into the room. Uh, and, but the keyboards are still prominent. Everything is clear, separated and overall cohesive. Okay. So that's the Atlantic 75. That's the listing notes. Now on the Porky, the vocals are slightly more prominent in the mix. Um, probably from the compression that was prob that was much more prominent and then uh, noticeable on the original versus the eight Atlantic 75. Um, and the dynamics, um, are very compromised compared to the uh, um, Atlantic 75, but still nice. There's some congestion and the busy parts of the song as was good to, compared to the 45, but they're very minor. Um, so this whole thing with the vocals, I, um, I couldn't decide if I thought it was a problem or not, because it's just, you know, if you put the original on after the Atlantic 75, the, the vocals were just, more in your face they're, you're, they're more noticeable you know but is noticeable better because all the other uh, attributes were comp compromised so a drug um, a drug mrs tublandia into this whole kerfuffle and I didn't tell her anything i just played the uh, one side of the og and i played one side of the atlantic 75 and she she said you know the atlantic 75 is is great sounds wonderful and if she but you know i didn't hold a gun to her head i said well do you notice anything different or and she said well you know the vocals are seem stronger in the original so it's not just me right i mean it's 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 there it's an attribute that you can observe but it's not a bad thing it's just what's observable so anyway that's my take on that um and to be clear i didn't have the classic records um to compare to. Maybe the classic records would slip in between the two uh, more so uh, than I suspect. Maybe it's it's on its own par. Um, but what it did, but having this porky for the lamb and not having it for selling England by the pound makes me want to really, you know, hear the porky for selling England and then I want to hear the classic records for this. So um, luckily my friend uh, Gordon at Beaker Records has a UK porky of uh, selling England by the pound. And so we're gonna do a shootout with that. And I'll probably revise my video for selling England once I have some more conclusions from that shootout. But um, basically that's it. Um, you know, if you want the best sounding version of Lamb Lies Down on Broadway, the Atlantic 75 is it. No question, and there'll be um, a link to it in the, in the description on where to get it from Acoustic Sounds. Um, if you 
don't want to spend the money, which is around 120, um, and you want a serviceable cut, um, you know, it's hard to go wrong with that Porky. I mean, it's probably $70, maybe a little bit more for near mint coffee. Mine is VG plus and well, it's VG plus near mint and spots, but you know, it's, it's totally serviceable. And it was enough to get the differences and the hear what the, that pressing was capable of. So um, without much further ado, um, get the Atlantic 75 if you want the absolute best pressing. Um, and I look forward to more of these Atlantics coming out. Um, I'm, you know, I am a full subscriber, number 420. And so I'll be getting these as they come in. And so I've still got Bad Company and the new Phil Collins Felicity from this batch. But uh, otherwise, that's it. Hope you Again, thanks for watching. And remember, Tubelandia, it's not just a place, but a state of sound. Thank you. Bye.